everybody. Welcome to 10 Minute Tuesday. If you're new here, my name is Cristana and I am the owner and creator here at Bella Renovare by Cristana. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and you will get all the latest notifications. So this week on 10 Minute Tuesday, I'm gonna go over brushes. So I keep getting a lot of questions about brushes and what are the best ones, what kinds do I use? And so I'm gonna give you guys some of the brushes that I use. I'm not necessarily gonna go over brands of brushes because everyone has their own brands. We're gonna talk more about bristles and the different shapes and kinds of brushes that there are out there that you can use in your furniture artistry. So let's get to it. So first of all, we have to set our timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes on the clock. All right, 10 minutes. All right, so <clears throat> Excuse me, one of the things, one of the brushes that I found at one of the craft stores here in Germany is it's a natural bristle brush and it bends. So you probably could go get a cheap chip brush because it almost looks like, look at this, it almost looks like they just bent it themselves, but you could go get a cheap chip brush and probably bend it. I don't know what will happen, but this is really good for getting into, first of all, it's got a long handle. And so it's really good for getting into areas that you can't get into, or you know, you've got an angle or something like that. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you've ever been there, if you see this brush and you've been there, you know, and I don't have to explain it to you. So this is a brush that I like to use to get into hard to reach places. Again, with those hard to reach places too, it really doesn't matter if it's a synthetic or a natural bristle or if it's a higher quality brush because you can't really see the brush strokes in there anyways. The main, the goal is to get that part painted, right? Okay, so here's this one. Now, if you ever talk, if you ever hear me talk about using a foam brush to put your top coats on, this is what I'm talking about, okay? This brush, if you can see it, it's, it's a foam brush and it is, there we go, it's a foam brush and it is really great for top coats. They come in different sizes. So, you know, some of them are actually half the size of this. Some of them are twice the size of this. So they come in, you know, half an inch, one inch, two inch, whatever. And sometimes they come in variety packs. Sometimes you can get them in a pack with this, all the same sizes. So I really like to have these around for doing the tops of things. And these are just really great to have in your arsenal. So I like these, these foam brushes, you can get them for really cheap. If you're using a water-based product with it, you can wash this out and reuse them if you want. They're not super high quality, so I wouldn't imagine that they would last after a few uses, but um, then you can recycle them. Okay, so next is another, this is a must have. I do not paint with these brushes, okay? I don't do base coats, I don't do anything with these brushes. What I do do is, let's say that I have, if I'm blending and I need to get color somewhere but I'm not using this brush to blend, I'm using another brush, I will use the cheap chip brushes. These are gold, okay? And you can get these in bulk. This is a two inch, these are gold, gold, 50.8 millimeters or two inch. I use these to put my textures on. I use these to add some wax every once in a while if I want to. These are a must, must, must have. Again, these come in different sizes. My favorite is the two inch 50.8 millimeter. That's my favorite size. I think it's universally easy, the easiest one to use. So another brush that you want in your arsenal is artist brushes, okay? Whether you get little cheap, cheap, cheap artist brushes, you don't have to be a fine artist to have these artist brushes. Let's get that. Okay, so these are the artist brushes. You don't have to be a fine artist. You wanna get different angles. This one's got an angle, this one doesn't. These allow you to, one, if you've got, you can paint with these, right? So let's say that you've got little tiny areas that need to get paint. These are perfect for that. Also, these are perfect for adding wax in little areas. These are perfect for putting gilding waxes on there. You, you're really gonna want some artist brushes in your arsenal. These ones are synthetic artist brushes. It's your choice what you want. Most of them are synthetic. So I use these, but that brings me to my next point. I have, because I have to be extra, I have started ordering makeup brushes to use in my work, okay? So here's a couple makeup brushes. This one's a little bit, if you can see it, 
This one's kind of fancy. These are, you know, to feather colors on, do color washing. I don't use the bigger ones so much. I can use this for stenciling as well. I do like these little ones. They're very similar to artist brushes, but makeup brushes are much softer and they come in a bunch of different shapes and they're easy to clean. Okay, so, and they're cute, look at them. So that's another thing that I have is I use makeup brushes. If you ever see a cute brush and it looks like an artist brush, it's probably a makeup brush. So next is, next up is a stencil brush. Okay, so I use stencil brushes. Plenty of companies have them. This is from Cutting Edge Stencils. These are, you know, they, they come like this. So you can see, if you can see how they're all kind of just concentrated right there in the center. And that helps you get some paint on there. And that way when you're dabbing it, it's all in one area and your brush, they're not splaying out. Another thing that you can do is, I really like the Dixie Belle Bell brushes and these are pretty, these are pretty concentrated in one area. So actually what I've seen a lot of people do, and I've done this before, is you can put some tape around the edges. If you put some tape around the edges, that will keep them all together and that will essentially give you another stencil brush instead of going and buying a stencil brush. But you, having a stencil brush or making your own is really important. Um, I do use these for stencil brushes because they're softer. You can put tape on it if you want to or because they are so soft, they hold onto the paint and you can just dab them. So, so that brings me to the next brush, which would be a wax brush. I like the Dixie Belle Bell brush for using, I use this only for waxing. I don't use this to paint. I don't use this to blend. Um, there's another wax brush. A lot of wax brushes look like this, okay? So they're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit more circular. I only use these kind of brushes that look like this for wax. I do not use these brushes for painting or anything else of that matter. I only use these for wax. And so it's important for you to have a wax brush and it's important for you to take care of it and clean it. So I only use water-based wax right now, so it's easy for me to clean it. But if you use oil-based wax, make sure that you're cleaning your brushes every so often. Um, especially if you're using clear wax and then dark wax and then white wax. Now, if you've got a wax brush for each one, then that's great, I don't. <laughs> so I use these for my wax. So you've got two different kinds of paint brushes, okay? So you've got a natural bristle brush and you've got a synthetic brush. I promise you these are clean. <laughs> you could, let me give you a couple tips at the end of how to clean your brushes. So a, a synthetic bristle is exactly that. It's a synthetic bristle. bristle. A nas natural bristle is made from the hair of sometimes boars and hogs and things like that. A lot of, okay, so anyways, you have the natural bristle and you have the synthetic bristle. So I used to use natural bristle a lot more. I have gone to the synthetic bristle. There's not super, okay, so the difference is a natural bristle will hold on to the paint a little bit more and the synthetic, you it glides a little bit easier. So it kind of pushes the paint off a little bit easier. So when you're, you're painting, it doesn't soak in your paint as much, if that makes sense. So a natural bristle will soak in your paint, hold a lot more paint, and then the synthetic brush, although it holds a good amount of paint, it doesn't soak the paint in and it kind of just, it's a little bit easier, I think, as a beginner to work with a synthetic brush. So what kind of brush do you need for what things? I have a couple that I use. Okay, so these are all Dixie Bell synthetic brushes, but most brush companies have these different shapes. So I like this, it's a short handle, it's very ergonomic. I use this for all my base coats. I actually prefer this for blending as well. It allows me to be closer to the piece and have more control over my pressure and things like that. So this is a just a flat mini brush. Okay, synthetic. I also really like, this is the same exact thing except it's got an angle on it. I like these because once you get a steady hand, you can learn how to paint without having to tape things off. These two are probably my favorite to use. And then you've got other shapes. So you've got these smaller ones. I don't use this quite as much. These are good for spindles. So your round ones, the smaller ones, these are good for spindles or getting into like smaller areas, maybe that you don't want this bigger brush to get into. And then, you know, these, these ones are oval. So these are really great for putting, using it to paint your spindles and things like that. You can also, with these brushes, 
So for this brush, if I had to pick a brush to use for the rest of my life, it would be this one because you can paint, you can top coat with this, you can do all the things with this brush. And as long as you're using water-based products, you can clean it really well and reuse it. These brushes, if you are getting a high quality synthetic brush, it will, should last you a really, really long time, especially if you take care of it. So even though this probably looks loved, cause it is, it's got a lot of paint on it. I do have a little bit of paint in here. If I really wanted to, I could take, so here's, here's a couple tips for cleaning paintbrushes, is you could take combs. A lot of people take, this is gonna sound really gross, but like the lice knit combs and they, use it to clean their brushes, very fine combs to get the, um, get the paint off of the paint brushes, the bristles. If you wanna do that, you can do that. Also, this is my favorite thing to use. I like scrubby soap, okay? So they come in three different flavors, smells. You've got the lemon lime, you've got lemon, and then you have orange. And what these do is they actually, I'm gonna open these up. This is a brand new one, so. It has a sponge actually in it, right? So it's got a sponge actually in it. It's embedded in there. And so it smells really good, but this is, it, it really does a really good job of getting stuff off. It's glycerin soap with natural citrus oil and aloe. So it's really good. It removes dirt, paint, oil, dirt grease, and more. So it's really good to clean your brushes with. Make sure that you are cleaning your brushes, not with hot water, because these filaments are put in here with glue. So if you have noticed that your brushes are shedding more than often and you're using scalding hot water, stop it. <laughs> Use lukewarm water to clean your brushes. So again, that is kind of a little bit of a rundown here on 10 Minute Tuesday of the different kind of brushes, what I use, what I use them for, how I clean them. You can also use Dawn dish soap to clean your brushes. Some people like to soak theirs in Murphy's oil soap. There's a couple different ways. So if you guys have a different way of cleaning your brushes or you have a better way of getting that, the brushes out of the bristles, let me know in the comments below. Also, if I didn't go over a brush and it was one of your favorite brushes and I didn't even go over it, because the chances are I probably didn't, let me know in the comments below what your favorite kind of brush is. So again, guys, that was 10 minutes. I went a little bit over, but I hope you found this helpful. If you have questions, questions for next week, put them in the comments below and we'll go over it. So hopefully that answered your questions about brushes, what I like to use, why I like to use them, when I like to use them, where I like to use them, right? Okay, so happy creating and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye!